All right, another great presentation. A uh, little bit of housekeeping first. Uh, so if you have your CA World mobile app, uh, you can uh, go to interactive sessions, uh, select this session, uh, and then you can uh, click on participate and enter in questions through that. And if we get some time at the end of the presentation, uh, I can ask some of those questions uh, to our speakers. So just know that that's available. Um, at this point in time, I would like to uh, uh, introduce this presentation. So this is, from a CA standpoint, this is perfect, where we're delivering the software. Uh, we have a partner involved, that in, in this case, it's Deloitte. Uh, and then we have the, the Deloitte working with the customer. So perfect scenario for, one, for us, one that we really endorse. Uh, we have two speakers here today. We have Chris Garibaldi from Deloitte. He's a partner at, at, at Deloitte. And we have Rick Rosenstiel uh, from Exelon. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Rick, and uh, they're going to uh, get started. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, very good. Um, welcome, everybody. My name is Rich Rosenstiel. I work for Exelon Corporation. Uh, if you don't know what Exelon is, it's uh, an energy holding company. It owns assets in 47 states uh, here. We have uh, three major utilities, one in the Chicagoland area, one around Philly, and then Baltimore. And we're currently in the process of acquiring three more utilities. So fairly large company with a lot of merger and acquisition activities going on. I'm the IT director for ComEd, so uh, my responsibilities are directly over one of the utilities and uh, how we manage the technology for that utility and how managing that also cuts across the enterprise. With that, Chris, I'll turn it over to you. Hi, I'm Chris Garibaldi. I'm a partner in Deloitte's technology strategy practice. Uh, I lead our project portfolio management practice. If you're familiar with PPM, Clarity is the tool that usually facilitates PPM engagements. Uh, and I built that practice for Deloitte over the course of the last 11 years of my career. And one of the things that we're going to talk to you about today is not just project portfolio management, but we, what we consider the next level of IT portfolio management, which is technology business management. And that's generally the gist of this presentation today, is if you're doing PPM or if you're doing some of these IT disciplines, how do you take it to the next level and actually start running IT like a business? So we'll get into that and hopefully have some good conversation with you throughout. So essentially our agenda today, talk about the value of the offering TBM, uh, help define it for you a little better so you better understand uh, what it is, and you'll see some very familiar components within it. So we'll define what the difference is between maybe what you have in your organization and what true technology business management is. And then talk about how, if you want to take the next step with TBM, uh, how you would take that journey. So one thing we wanted to first bring to light is what's the value of doing this? So there's the management of IT, but why would we take it to a portfolio level? Why would we do technology business management? So here are some items, and we'll just highlight a few. One of the things that we've seen um, consistently from anyone who, an executive who takes control of their IT portfolio or any manager who knows what they're doing with an IT and has that command and visibility, is that they suddenly become a trusted partner to the business. And so many times I come into an IT organization and they say, well, um, the business says that we never deliver anything. That's a big struggle for us. And then at the same time, IT says the business doesn't know what they want. Well, technology business management builds the platform to be able to have that conversation and be a good business partner. And uh, I'll add on to that, Chris. So uh, again, Exelon's a large utility which has been around for 100 years, long before technology was really you know, as powerful as it is today. And there's still some of that old school thinking at the utility that IT is really just a service provider. Uh, what the company really does is deliver electrons, create electrons, all of that, which is true, but it's so dependent today on technology uh, that even the operators of the grid realize that IT is more than just a service now. Uh, we, and I'd say this has happened over the last couple of years. We've become partners to identify opportunities uh, to make their operations more efficient, um, meet uh, some of the key performance metrics that they have, and to come to them, you got to have credibility. Uh, I think that's the one thing that, if I had to look at the value here on this bullet, is that coming to those business partners, which have been around a while and they really aren't you know, sold on IT all the time, uh, really being able to come and talk about how you're running your operations as a business, not just 
an order taker for them. And also the other bullet we'll highlight really has to do with IT costs. So one of the first projects or the first project that I got involved with when I started the portfolio management practice was helping a CIO justify the cost of IT to the business and giving that business a visibility of what IT cost for them so that they could help the CIO reduce cost. And actually, uh, by virtue of being able to have command over the cost of your organization and explain explicitly what those services were and why they cost what they cost, that actually increased that CIO's overall budget. While they did make cuts to things that the business didn't think was valuable, the business said, wow, that's fantastic. This is a valuable exercise. Now I know every dollar I spend with you is spent on something that I care about just as much as you care about. So uh, managing that overall cost portfolio is really effective to building those relationships and having command of IT. And then uh, I'll just uh, hit one more point here. Uh, the significantly refining cost of the application portfolio. So um, about 10 years ago, one of the vice presidents came to me and he goes, I don't know what a server is, but I know we got too many of them. <laughs> so probably a lot of you have experienced similar conversations where there's a continuous push to reduce those costs, make things very effective um, and efficient on the IT side. So again, uh, when you look at all of this data that we have, and a lot of you are probably doing the kind of things that Chris is going to talk more about and we'll, we'll discuss here. Um, you're doing them in kind of bits and pieces and in silos, but once you can really start to pull that together, there's real value for reducing costs. So we talked a little bit about value. Let's talk a little bit about, oh, well, wrong button. Um, what TBM is, and really it's about running IT more like a business. Um, and it's building on a concept that's not brand new. It's a concept that's actually fairly old or has been with us for several decades now. And that's the, the ERP concept. So I think in the 70s, this whole idea of having command of your overall business, your business resources, uh, and, and managing that all with an ERP solution uh, was where the, the fruition of that particular concept, and throughout the years that's been implemented in several companies. The issue with doing ERP for IT, which is what Deloitte actually originally wanted to title this offering, uh, is that that has a terrible connotation. ERP for IT sounds expensive, it sounds long term, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of patience before there's any payoff. And that's definitely not what we wanted to offer in terms of installing a capability, a TBM capability within an organization. So while the concepts of ERP definitely apply uh, to technology business management, what we've tried to do is change the way that you would implement these capabilities within an organization so that you are doing less uh, to lighten the organizational uh, impact and then also more quickly getting value and proving to the business that there is a value to IT being more of a business management organization uh, and not just being a cost center. And you'll see here the core um, concepts of ERP are then again being applied to TBM, enterprise resource management, real-time visibility, process efficiency of course, and then a closed loop system which you'll see visually as we go through describing uh, what TBM is in detail. And I'll just uh, hit on one up there, Chris. So the leveraging the use of scarce resources, I think, again, all of us probably deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. Oftentimes we think about that as the, the folks who do the work, which is certainly one of the resources we have, um, but the assets that we have, can we reuse them for another purpose? Can we put a different application on a, a similar type of a box? Do we have bandwidth on it? Uh, and then certainly the money. Uh, most of us probably operate under budgets that are very tightly controlled, so you only have so much uh, to get uh, what you want to get done, and we're trying to maximize all of those resources without burning them out, as it were. <laughs> exactly. Now, the core components of technology business management are listed here. Uh, many IT organizations are actually already doing these things. IT financial management, project portfolio management, service management, application portfolio management, and lifecycle management. These concepts are typically installed in every IT organization to some degree, whether that be in an enterprise closed loop system, which is fairly rare, or being done here and there using various systems or spreadsheets or Microsoft Access databases, there's some form of tactical management to these disciplines. 
But what I think IT organizations are shorting themselves on is the value that comes with tying this information together to structuring this data so that you can have command of your organization and then again bring that information to the business and partner with them on how to most effectively run IT for the business. And the picture here that we show is this is how we would tie those things together. So regardless of whether or not you have those disciplines, the question really is, are those disciplines here integrated in a fashion so that that information can be used at the portfolio level for the executives? And the other thing that's, that's nice about this system is that when the executives focus on what information they really need, it's really not that much detail. And a lot of IT management, uh, because we like geek out on things, we like to get to a, a level of minutia that's just not required for executives and, and likely isn't required at the tactical management level either. So it's really the trick here is making sure that structured information gets to the top and is trustable, but then also removing a lot of the minutia of IT uh, management administrative overhead that's not required to drive a lot of value. So we'll go through these components and then uh, Rich is gonna give us a, some use cases from his uh, life running excellent IT. So in demand management you have requests coming in and you're gonna triage those requests, prioritize those requests, decide whether or not you're going to do them, build business cases for some in some case. And when you decide that you are gonna do something, you're gonna move those requests into the execution phase. And that comes in the form of maybe a project, maybe that project is an application. Once that application's up and running, it'll enter your application portfolio, so you'll work through this cycle. The other is maybe it's just a service that you're providing for the business, and that service then is, is granted fairly quickly through demand, and then you deliver it. On the back end, you have results management. So this is a, a even more mature concept than tying together the rest of these disciplines. Results management is not just looking at your KPIs, understanding whether or not a project was on time or on budget, but really grading something after the point of delivery for years to come. Did it really meet the business case that we promised up in demand? Did we get that return that we said we could? And did the business get the value out of it that they committed to? This is about making them take accountability for the things that IT is delivering and then measuring that. And the next time they bring in ID in the demand cycle, reminding them, oh, the last time we visit, did this, it didn't drive a lot of value. Why would it change now? I mean, that's a valuable thing to advise your, your business so they can say, you're right. You know, this is, a, this is always a hot idea, but with a low yield. So let's think about investing somewhere else. Yeah, so I'll touch on it a little bit, if you don't mind, just real quick. So, um, something from your last slide, Chris, where you said you don't have to do a big bang. I think the first time you and I worked together about six years ago, uh, we did a lot of this for the company, ComEd and Pico, uh, versus IT, but um, we had a very mature financial management system within the company, but it was totally isolated from project management, from life cycle management, et cetera. And uh, over the last couple of years, we've been building out the, those uh, processes. Oddly enough, we don't have a very well-defined demand management process yet, so although it kind of gives you an idea that you have to do demand first, Actually, as long as you have a process, you don't have, it, don't, have, don't have to have it as well oiled as maybe some of the other pieces. But ultimately, uh, what you're really looking for is that top piece. So, sorry, Chris, I just wanted to jump right, in. Right, no, great, that. yeah. And, and of course, as Rich points out, and this is a term I learned from working with Rich at Exelon, you want your pipes and wires in place and structured without leaks, and you want your information trustable so that the key is not do we do these disciplines, but do we have them tied together without leaks? And can we trust that information? Can we get it up to the portfolio level? That's where, as Rich pointed out, you do your financial management, where you manage your resources, where you govern your overall organization. You're the, the portfolio, the TBM portfolio manager is now subscribing to all of this activity that's being delivered below in the pipes and wires and actually getting value out of it. Value for the business and valuable conversations with business executives, not just how many servers do I have and what applications are in our portfolio, but what are the costs of those things? What is the business value? Who actually uses those? Have those types of conversations and whether or not they actually delivered what they promised when you take a look back at the business case. So really, up in the portfolio, you should be able to make better decisions about what you decide to do or decide not to do, what you bolster or cancel with an execution, and then how you better measure those things in the future by feeding that information down into these different pipes and wires. So just to take it a little bit further, so uh, one thing I, I, oh, I think years ago, um, 
Exelon ComEd was an electric utility run by engineers, then it became operators. About five, 10 years ago, it became an accounting firm that happened to produce electricity uh, because the financial controls are so tight. Uh, we have to report to our regulators every year. We have to show due diligence on the spend we have, et cetera. Um, and our business uh, looks at finances, uh, obviously uh, next year's budget, two years out, they look very carefully. They actually go out to five years and they expect IT to be able to do the same thing. Now we're generally pretty good knowing what we're gonna do next year we're okay that two years out, and then the last three years today, we're pretty much guessing. And uh, the business, that, that, that takes away some of our credibility, because they're like, well, hold it. Two years ago, you said that your budget could be $60 million. Now you're telling me it needs to be 75 to do all this work. How come you didn't know that two years ago? So that's some of the expectations that we uh, have to live under, and what I see some of the value for our company in particular of having this kind of more, um, I'll call it blown out, processes that really give us insight into the IT as a business. Yeah, absolutely, and I think being able to predict the future or at least plan the future also comes with the value of being able to look back, being able to see the history of what you've done, what was effective or what you've had to do over the years, understanding the roadmaps as we were talking earlier, you know, the roadmaps of various applications and how is that going to impact our overall business. And then you have that information where you can actually plot out the next several years and, and understand the cost of that. So a question I commonly get is uh, when we review the racetrack, actually, let me go back, one more point. We, we call this the racetrack diagram just because it looks like a big racetrack and uh, our clients affectionately named it that. When we show this to clients, I get two reactions. One is they do feel like this is a, an accurate representation of what a utopian TVM uh, organization would look like, but the second is extreme anxiety because they say, boy, we just don't have the stomach to put all those things in place and that looks really expensive and there's no way that as a cost center we're going to ask the business for IT for IT budget in order to put this in place. And really the, the message I have for you is I'm not trying to get you to do all of these things to the highest level of maturity. The thing I think you should do is think about what the least amount of these things you need to do at the lowest level of maturity to actually drive value. And you'd be surprised at how little you need to have command of to have an extremely effective conversation with the business about cost, about a strategic alignment, about making good investments for the business and running the business of IT. So it's not a tremendous effort, even in the largest organizations, to do this and have command over a thread of this that will drive uh, really valuable conversations. And then as you cycle through, then you add capabilities. So our message is do it in small chunks iteratively so that people can see the value and you can then derive that value to do more. And that's the question is how do we do this? Where do we start? How we have all this stuff in our organization already. I've seen a lot of the terms, but we don't have it tied together. And so my advice is the way we serve our clients is we'll go to them and do a quick assessment of, of what's in place, just get a lay of the land, and then very quickly turn that into a gap analysis and a roadmap to the baby steps that will take them maturity step by maturity step and, and value delivery after value delivery on to how they can start driving value from technology business management. So my advice to you is make sure you take a step back, make sure you lay out that uh, roadmap of important initiatives, probably the most valuable and hopefully the easiest first, and then start uh, getting more mature over time as you prove and drive value at the portfolio level. And it, uh, for us at ComEd, um, to what we were talking about earlier, some of those uh, well, pipes and wires, as you call them, uh, Chris, we have fairly well developed. Um, but as an example, por application portfolio management, we are just getting started really doing that in, in an organized fashion like we're representing here. Uh, the other things we have fairly well built out. Um, but that's, again, just a layering on approach. And I think uh, one thing we can use this for is to take to our business partners so that they understand we do actually have a vision for where our business is going. Um, and understand like some of those things we either already have working, we just need to refine them, or maybe we haven't done that, but show them that once we finish application portfolio management and have our hands around that, then we can do an even better job of being able to extract out where the business value and where the opportunities really are. Great. So just a summary thought, um, 
there is an imperative for IT to be more of a business partner. I mean, IT is becoming a big component of the business units. And at the same time, there's a threat to an IT commander in terms of IT is becoming very easy for the business. Shadow IT is popping up all over. And how, how do you fend off or, or build that trusted relationship to where the business comes to you and says, how do we do this technical component of our business better rather than going out to vendors or to professional services consultants and having those people bring IT in through different channels into the organization? It's really about building that relationship. You're, the best way to fend off those shadow IT organizations is with a really good business relationship because as soon as they don't trust you, they're going to feel enabled to basically do IT on their own. And so our message is, you know, have a command of what's going on, be able to, to work with them and have them trust you, and then have the latest information about that organization and, and help shape that organization with them as a much better way than trying to do IT as a black box and just a cost center that you subscribe to and have to subscribe to because the techies are the only ones who really know how to run those systems. And uh, so again, Exelon, a very uh, brick and mortar type of a place, been around for a hundred years basically. Um, there's a lot of technology like relays that are out in the substations that allow the electricity to, to go to your homes, right? Um, back in the day, people actually were at the substation and they'd throw a switch, literally, you know, they get a call and they'd go out and do this. Today, of course, that isn't the way it works. It's all computerized, uh, run on large SCADA systems, but uh, those components that are out there that we've kind of hooked some technology to, today are all coming with microprocessors and the folks that maintain them, uh, they expect that technology to be on there, be able to use it effectively, and that younger generation, uh, as they come on, we need to think about what are they going, because anyone uh, in that position, if they know how to go do it, they're going to go do it, most likely. And uh, IT has to be in front of that to help and guide them through it. Otherwise, you'll have a bunch of cottage industries popping up out there, and then one day, uh, something bad will happen. And if it's technology, they'll come to IT, whether we did it or not. So again, these are some of the things we're trying to get out in front of. And that's it, yeah, that's our summary. So we want to just open it up to Q&A for the audience if there's any questions. Uh, thank you very much. I don't see any questions online through the, uh, through the mobile app, but does anybody have any questions? No questions. Oh, there's one. Yeah. Uh, what do you think is uh, causing uh, TBM to be particularly popular at the moment versus a few years ago when you know the, the clar clarity was suffering and there wasn't so much of this business around? So what's the big cause of the uh, this thrust in terms of uh, TBM? I'm sorry, I missed the first part of the question. It was hard to hear you saying that clarity wasn't as popular a few years ago, and why is there a thrust for it now? Is yeah, it I mean, if you talk to the talk to CA, you know, there was a bit of a dip in clarity take up a few years ago, and that's it's really taking off now. So I was wondering, that coupled with this, you know, what's causing that that in the industry? What's causing that big take up at the moment? Well, I'll say I, I think applications like clarity, or when you talk about application portfolio management, or application lifecycle management. All of those things manage or were perceived to be the tools that you would use to manage the tactics. So managing projects, understanding where your, how your assets were configured, and none of that is very sexy to an executive, right? What was sexy to executives a few years ago were uh, applications like Aptio or dashboard applications that had all these great looking reports that uh, an executive felt like, boy, if I could get this report, then I could run my organization effectively and I could you know, show what's going on within my organization. But what they didn't realize was, in the very unsexy messages, those reports are garbage if you don't have those pipes and wires in place and well wired. So I think there is, one, a continued demand for that big data for those analytics, but two, uh, people are getting smarter about what they're being sold and they realize that the dashboard alone doesn't get them what they really wanted. It's gotta be the dashboard coupled with a very well integrated TBM suite of applications. And once you have that, then you truly do have command and can have a very um, commanding voice of your organization. 
and I'll, I'll just add on from at least our company's perspective. So 10 years ago, um, the IT budget at ComEd for capital investment was probably around $50 million and an O&M budget of let's say $35 million. Today, we're doing a, about a billion dollar smart grid investment and our current um, capitals are more around $90 million and uh, the, of course the expense kind of following through on tails. And I think a lot of that, one, it's the high expend that executives see in the IT, but they're also seeing the value and, and are anticipating it being even more so. So I think there's a bit of, we were just service providers, now we're partners. It's still going on, it's not a done deal yet, but I think there's that transition going on. I agree. Hi, Chris. Uh, I have a question regarding to you. Right now, actually, I know you are partner with like a PPM Clarity software. So that's a Clarity has a full functionality to handle the uh, technology business management uh, such kind of process. Great that's question. Right. Yeah. So the question was, does Clarity have all the capabilities required to facilitate the roadmap or the racetrack? And the answer is no. It doesn't. Uh, it's definitely moving that way, and so we hear a lot about Clarity's roadmap, but um, really to get all the value out of it now, you'd have to integrate several applications that do these different capabilities. And Clarity probably will never have everything that's within this capability set. You'll have to go to other applications, but having those tightly integrated and understanding the, the simplistic amount of information that you need to have integrated between these applications is key into putting in an effective solution? Great question. Yeah, so my question was, what technologies did you use to implement this in, in this particular company? Can you ask it again? Sorry, it's really hard to hear up here. Yeah. What, what technologies did you use to implement all those components in this scenario? Um, good question. So actually the first um, TBM implementation I did was actually the first portfolio management uh, implementation I did. I actually implemented uh, for a large entertainment company services management, application portfolio management, assets management, um, incident management, project management, and then a very deep financial management component on top of that. And over the course of the last decade have been increasingly helping or have been helping them increase their maturity in those particular disciplines. We did use, we actually used Niku at the time, but it became CA Clarity as the project portfolio management. Uh, but in services, we used Remedy, because back in the day, that was what they used. Uh, and then the financial management component had to be custom developed. So nowadays, there are other options for these particular components. The demand has actually grown to where there's full suites of applications that you can use for this. And CA has their entries in the different models, but basically, what I think is the most important is the integration framework that you have underneath those. And right now, um, I don't see a very strong integration framework other than custom development to get these things to talk to one another. And so we're always looking for vendors who have all these solutions to have a more tightly coupled integration solution. Okay, just one more question. So best of breed is the answer to your <laughs> question, really, short answer. My question is for uh, Richard. Uh, when you started engaging business more closely to work with uh, IT, I am um, hoping that you would have had a relationship manager or somebody or client officer liaisons who work with business. So from whose side were they most likely to operate? Were, were they IT representatives working as relationship officers or were they business project managers who were uh, liaisoning with uh, IT? So how did that kind of organization change come in place? Yeah, it's uh, still evolving a little bit, but when it first started, it was really driven by the business. Uh, they created roles called corporate functional area managers who um, for core business processes, they became the owner across a number of the utilities. That's one thing we've been struggling with is that as you acquire different utilities, of course their technology is different and they have different business processes often trying to get them all on the same platform. So they saw the need originally and then IT just slightly behind them realized like this is a great opportunity for us to have that kind of counterpart on, on that side. And so there are portfolio owners that are IT and so that becomes a collaborative uh, conversation, but it was really started on the business side. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, we're, we're out of time. Um, 
they're going to step off to the side of the stage. So if you guys have further questions, uh, please do that. But thank you very much, gentlemen, for a great presentation. Thank you. Thanks.